OK, we're looking at Mr. Ridley's RMT revision, and this is number three, and this is joining metals. The first thing we need to know about joining metals, there are two categories of joining metals. One is permanent joining. This includes welding and brazing, and really the only way of getting them apart is cutting them apart. Or non-permanent joining. This includes nuts, bolts, and screws, where the pieces of the two components that are joined can be undone again using whatever tools. They're the two categories. First, we're going to look at soldering. Soldering is a fairly weak joint. It uses a low melting point metal called solder and a, usually an electrically heated tool called a soldering iron. Um, the technique briefly for soldering, although you don't really need to know this, but it, it, just to show you how it works, is the soldering iron comes down. It, this is for electrical components. It uh, touches on the track. It heats the copper track. Um, the point of contact there, heating the copper track, then what happens is the solder is added. Once the solder is added, it melts to form a joint. And because it's a metal, it's a good conductor. And there's there's the finished joint. So that's soldering. The next um, method of joining, it uses a, a, f a filler metal. So it's heated up the same as soldering. And this is called brazing, sometimes called hard soldering. This using brazing rods, which melt at about 800 degrees. So similar to soldering, but basically the, the metal that's used as a filler is harder, so the joint is stronger, used on bicycle frames. It uses a brass filler metal, which bonds to the steel chemically. It uses a gas torch, like we have in school, and you can see there a bicycle frame bottom bracket, and that's been brazed. The next one, which is stronger again, so we're moving up in, in strength, is welding. Welding is the strongest way to join metals like steel. In welding, both pieces are heated and melted and fused together. Um, the filler rod, so if we're melting steel, the filler rod is steel, so it just ends up as one piece of steel. Very difficult to get apart, very strong. Um, different types of welding. There are three really major types of welding. The first one is gas welding or oxyacetylene welding. This uses two gases, oxygen and acetylene, that burn with a very high temperature, about 2,000 degrees, much hotter than brazing, and they melt a mild steel welding rod. So the filler rod is steel. It all ends up as one piece of steel. Uh, there's a technique for gas welding. A very hot flame melts the steel rod, and here we have what's called a weld pull. <coughs> a welding rod is fed in, and that makes a weld. The two other types of welding that you might need to remember are arc welding and MIG welding. These use electrical current to form a high temperature electric arc and this melts the steel filler rod. So they're b both quite similar. They need an electrical circuit here and the electrical arc melts the rod instead of using gas or anything else to heat it. <coughs> MIG welding. MIG stands for metal inert gas. Um, this is, with MIG welding, the rod is actually fed down a tube and out of the torch here. So there's a motor in here and it's, it's um, electrically fed out. It's very easy to learn. It uses, um, it doesn't distort the metal, but it does need clean metal. Okay. MIG welding. Arc welding is very similar, but it uses a metal stick or rod. And this process is often in America called stick welding. It's arc welding. One of the dangers of arc welding and MIG welding is that they produce UV light, which can cause severe eye damage. So a very special mask, a whole face mask, needs to be worn. It's actually UV light. Um, it can damage your eyes quite severely. Spot welding is the last electrical um, and that's welding method, and that uses thin sheet steel. The two electrodes push together and a weld point is formed inside there and creates just a little round spot weld. Spot welding is used in um, mechanised robot welding in the manufacture of cars. They're all spot welded together. Okay, that was permanent methods. Now we're on to temporary methods. The first temporary method is set screws or nuts and bolts. Um, here we have a selection of different head types. So there's normal hexagon, uh, Torx, and a socket allen screw and they're all different different type different tools to undo them but they're all done up and they're all uh, temporary fixings 
spring washers. Here's a picture of a spring washer. This goes underneath the nut and it's in essence a spring. It keeps the nut under tension. So if it's um, used on, for example, a motorbike engine that vibrates, it stops the nut working loose. Once it's tightened, these edges here grip into the nut, grip the surface and keep it tight. A further way of tightening that's used on aeroplanes is nylock nuts. This is a, a normal nut with a thread inside here, but there is a blue nylon insert here. When the bolt is tightened, it forms its own thread into the nylon in insert, and this grips onto the bolt, preventing it from working loose. It shouldn't vibrate loose at all. It needs to be undone with an, uh, a spanner. Nylock nuts. Countersinking. There's a countersink that's a countersunk set screw. By using a countersinking tool here into a fixing hole and using a countersink screw, you can achieve a, achieve a flush finish. Now, this is the same as in wood, but if we see a countersunk screw there and we've added a countersink here, and then when the screw fits in, it fits flush to the surface of the metal, leaving a nice flush surface. Pop riveting. This is used to join pieces of sheet metal. It can be used on wood and acrylic. Perhaps but you could maybe join a piece of acrylic to a piece of metal. Uh, useful if you can only have access to one side of the material. It's technically it's technically a permanent fitting, but you can drill them through quite easily. So you know, but it is a uh, that's pop riveting. The pop riveting process: a hole is drilled in the metal. The rivet is pushed through here's the rivet here and it has the rivet body here and there is a pin a thin pin the rivet gun then pulls up on the pin until the pin shears and then it breaks away leaving the rivet as it does so it pulls the two surfaces of ma uh, material together so it's really useful because you only need one side to get to one side so if you've got a box or something like that working from the outside you can do that easily that's pop riveting there's another, just a little animation there showing you pot riveting. It's quite, and the three stages, the rivet goes through. As the pin's pulled, it pulls up the bottom part of the rivet. Once that's tight together, then the pin breaks off. Okay, it's quite, a, but it, it is, um, it may come up in the exam. Pot riveting. Thread cutting. Instead of nuts and bolts, it is possible to cut threads in mild steel and non-ferrous metals using taps and dies. These are taps and dies. They're a tap, a uh, tap holder and a die holder there. This is a thread cut. There's a thread cut there. Internal threads are done using a tap and a tap holder. So there's an internal thread cut into something. A suitable size hole is drilled. The tap is started making sure it's at 90 degrees. It's turned every couple of turns. You turn it backwards to clear the, the cutting tool. It's a very hard tool so it can cut into steel and it will cut a thread, an internal thread. To cut a <coughs> sorry. To cut an external thread, um, a, a die is used in a die holder, same technique, okay? So there's the two different threads. There's the external thread and the internal thread. Okay, now it's test time. Let's test. Name this common temporary fixing. The most common of the temporary fixings. That's an easy one. It's a nut and bolt. Nuts and bolts are used to join metals. Spring washers, remember, are used to stop them shaking loose. Which tool would be used to tighten this type of set screw? This type of set screw needs a Allen key. An Allen key is used to tighten the set screw. Allen keys are used in cars aeroplanes because the fixing can be made lighter. If you think instead of a bolt head, it's a lighter head, okay? There's the Allen key. What type of joining metal is a relatively weak and he uses a low melting point metal to join them? Soft soldering. There's soft soldering main, used mainly for electrical components, things like phones, all the components are soldered together. Soft soldering is joining metals using solder, remember. The solder is soft metal, so the joint is relatively weak. Which joining technique uses this tool to join thin sheet steel? Pop riveting. 
pot riveting. Pot riveting is a method of joining thin sheet steel. Using a pot rivet means you only need access to one side of the joint used to put aeroplanes together. Which joining technique uses a gas torch and brass filler rod to join steel? It is brazing. Brazing. The joining is a, a the f stronger than soldering, but not as strong as welding, so it's a kind of in-between one. The lower melting point metal, comparatively, I say, about 800 degrees, used to make steel bike frames. Which technique is used to form this car? What makes the technique so strong? It is welding. <coughs> This is done by melting the work pieces and adding a steel filler rod to form a pool of molten metal that cools to become a, jo a strong joint. The metal becomes all one piece. What is this type of welding which uses electricity to create a very strong joint? It is arc welding. Arc welding. This uses electricity to generate heat and fuse two pieces of steel together.